Has the sexiest CEO in gaming made a large mistake? Well, remarkably good shape man, Strauss Selnick has made a purchase. He went to the market, and back he came with Zynga. Now, it's not fully went through yet, but with this news, Take-Two Interactive, and mind you, that's Take-Two. I mean, that is so many games. The obvious one is Red Dead and GTA, but so much more as well, you know, NBA and, uh, and many more things. Uh, but the stock price dropped 22%. Boom, down it went. So, did Strauss Zelnick, author of a book about basically being young forever, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> did he make a whoopsie? That is exactly what the market is suggesting right away because Zynga's share price, choo! Take two share price, wee! <laughs> it's, I mean, there's a lot of reasons possibly why, but, you know, it sounds like a great move. Zynga are huge, but I think people just have some slight problems with uh, just how much he paid. Because usually, you know, yes. usually when it comes to these deals, we joke like, oh, these, you know, billionaire companies, whatever, they go and find some change down the back of the sofa and go buy a company with it. In this case, I think uh, Take Two effectively remortgaged their houses to, you know, t- to keep the analogy for a, a normal person buying things. They had to remortgage all of their houses to make to afford this deal. Nah, man, they just had to dip into five percent of the Shark Card Fund. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably not, but basically, what happened here is Take Two Interactive have announced an enormous deal to purchase Zynga. Did you play Farmville when you were fifteen with the other people in your class? That Zynga. So Zynga are being acquired, it seems. Now, if this does go through, it's for $12.7 billion. Um, now, that's quite a lot of money. And it's a very interestingly large, uh, interestingly large amount of money. And that said, Z- there is 45 days for Zynga to accept a better offer from another party if somebody is, at least as the market would say, completely insane. <laughs> uh, so... Take-Two are currently paying 64% over Zynga's current stock price as a part of this $12.7 billion offer. Um, maybe they're lear- they've learned a bit of a harsh lesson because apparently yeah. they were one of the suitors for mm-hmm. Codemasters. Of course, Codemasters were purchased by EA instead. So maybe they're just thinking, well, we should have thrown more money in. And this is a record high. Now, when you think about Zynga, you just think, oh yeah, well, mobile goes whatever. As a gamer, brackets, trademark, all caps, all the all the accoutrements. <laughs> you think about Bethesda and you're like, oh yeah, Elder Scrolls, awesome, cool. That's worth a lot of money. All those, oh wow, I mean Bethesda, come on. That's Doom. That's, holy shit, look at all the property that... <laughs> Bethesda went for seven and a half billion dollars. Jump change by comparison. Yeah, I mean, it's not... It, it's not double... It's getting oddly close to double, though, the money. $12.7 billion, $7.5 billion. And that just makes you think, like, you know, number one, mobile games, worth a hell of a lot of money, even with overpaying going on. Because another thing is Tencent, who put $8.6 billion into Supercell. You may not know Supercell, but they are Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, all those games. And, you know, I will admit, I think it's Clash Royale. That's like the little, um, you send your dudes against their dudes and it's up and down in your screen. I think that describes most mobile games. I, I, forget, yes. <laughs> I forget what you call that genre. Mm. But I did jump into it as, a, as I did actually with um, Clash of Clans because I just wanted to see what the hell is this mobile hellscape. Hmm. You know what? Clash Royale is like a real, it's a fun, well-designed game. Obviously, it's evil and insidious. But it's really depressing to me that obviously the Supercell money printer you know, like Tencent are willing to pay more for the for that than Microsoft is to buy fucking Bethesda. Yeah. And I think that's just a useful thing for those of us who are very much in the core gaming space to almost like check our biases and to think, whoa, hang on. That gaming market is weird when it comes to money. Um, now, another thing then, Embracer Group. Uh, was it Activision Blizzard that they surpassed in terms of headcount recently? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So the total number of employees in Embracer Group is over Activision Blizzard. Um, They've been on such a crazy acquisition spree, picking up so many different companies. Um, But, you know, even they would probably completely double take at 13 billion. That's a lot of money for one thing, like. Yeah. So why, though? Well, clear path to bring Take-Two's console PC games to mobile. So part of it is route to market. Yeah. 
And okay, so I, I remember this was because uh, I've listened to a fair few interviews with, uh, I believe his name is Mark Pincus. Hmm. It was like the original, I think he was the founder, early CEO. But one of the things that Zynga invested a hell of a lot of money in, one of the things that made them a differentiator in that space was data science. Hmm. They had a super, super, super staffed and robust, well-funded data science department. And I wonder if there is anything unique within within Zynga that Take Two really believes that they can exploit. Because if you're going to think that like Take Two has got the IP, and it maybe you could almost say more so has got like the chops for some of the games, but like if Zynga ends up having this like incredible operational capacity, having a lot of those soft skills that are, you know, beside that. I mean, even just saying enhancement of existing titles via live ops slash crossover IP events. Um, using Zynga's scale and chart boost ad platform to acquire new users more efficiently and optimize mobile ad inventory. This is the sorts of things that goes on with mobile companies that we don't really deal with because the sorts of games that we make and play generally do not involve the advertising model. Yeah, I mean, if you think a lot about Take Two and how they generally come across is, and maybe this is just like me speaking from how I feel, but I think they very much come across as primitive. Like, you look at what GTA is doing, and it seems to be successful despite. It's not, like, it's using basic stuff, and like, you've relatively basic uh, techniques and stuff to garner users and all that, but it's, like, it's his explosive success based on the GTA name, based on almost, like, a, almost in a way pure luck. Like, that was the franchise I caught on. That was the big one because of the game. But they haven't seemed to have done anything in the sense of, like, Evolved in the hyper data science way, in this the super like strong marketing that really we are going to psychology you into giving us all your money. They've kind of operated on just here's shark cards, I guess. Oh, they're working. Oh, cool, sweet. Mm. So I think there's they must feel there's a lot of stuff they can unlock from the you know because like Activision Blizzard have done a lot of stuff with King. Obviously, you see a lot of King's practices move over into the Call of Duty stores and stuff like that. Whereas in anything Take Two's done, it's been like primitive comparatively yeah so i think this is them going how much money are we leaving on the table by not doing all this mobile stuff and not having this data science and not having access to all this well let's hope it's more than 13 billion dollars yeah and you know i remember this is a long long time ago uh i think it's when this channel was still a bit younger we got an email from a developer and i, I really regret that i didn't get back to him i'm sorry if i've missed your email i've been very swamped honestly for the last uh uh <laughs> life's been a mess for two years but one of the things that that person brought up and this was somebody who works in a i believe anyway if you know if the story goes mm. um in a successful mobile studio basically where they're like look the amount of revenue generated per employee here is so much more than those people over at blizzard mm. you know just that thing of like Unless you're in these teams, you do not appreciate how much more financially efficient it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, like being, being say, the dev team in Candy Crush or mm -hmm. something else. And then, of course, because Candy Crush is not a mega development intensive enterprise. I mean, it is still development intensive. I think there's quite a lot going on there. More than people would appreciate. Um, but it just means that the thing that they then have to optimize around is the monetization model. It's how the game loop works. It's how the power ops all tie into that. It's the marketing campaigns. And it's just that stuff that's became hyper-developed. I mean, you think about a game like uh, Clash of Clans or, you know, those very simple, you know, game of war of fire age legend of the clan smash, <laughs> whatever of the, of the, yeah. that just appears in the app store. There's millions of them, it seems. Um, you look at those, you kind of think, well, that's not too hard to make. It's a pretty no. simple game, all things considered. I mean, bloody hell. You could have one, you could have a prototype for something like that going in friggin' zero time. So, there's a lot of other things they optimize, yeah. right? And that just means that there's a bunch that Zynga have that they won't have. Also, they're saying uh, cross promoting content, new geographies, cross play integrations, and a further focus on innovation and emerging business models. I think that basically is all things that are bad for us. <laughs> Almost certainly. So that's basically what they are buying. They can have all the existing revenue of Take Two or of um, of Zynga, and then they can transfer their Take Two things over there as well, using Zynga as their route to market. Um, so 
There you go. Basically, there's like the Zynga. Zynga's the brand face of Take-Two's entire mobile division with um, Frank, the current Zynga CEO, leading that organization. This includes Take-Two's existing T2 mobile gaming division. That's mm. big, right? Big. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, obviously, Take-Two are on mobile. They have been decently successful. Like, you can buy the Grand Theft Autos on your phone. And from what I understand, like, if you just get... You know those things where, you know, you plug them into either side of your yeah. phone and now your phone resembles a, a Switch? Like, uh, no, uh, he showed yeah. me his with the Razer one. And when I looked at it, I gotta tell you. I mean, shit. Like... The, this like this thing will play Genshin Impact. Honestly, probably at 120 FPS because Apple finally decided to put a high refresh display in. So you're telling me that I can play a game that looks as good as Genshin at an incredible frame frame rate with a really good controller comfortably like a Switch. And uh, it was Reyk Reykjavik? I always get him confused with Reykjavik, the city in Iceland. But the yeah. video essay guy, he did a big old series on mobile games. And I remember playing uh, Dead Cells playing a few other games, trying out Apple Arcade with a mm. controller on my iPad. And it was a fucking brilliant experience. And that, that's the funny thing, yeah. actually. These are all probably great if you just put a controller, you know, pair your, your game console controller. Yeah, and thankfully, take to your seeking to put a complete end to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because that oh, shit doesn't make money. Come on. Yeah, so, games? No. Those are not lucrative as going in the Zynga style because, in, you know, the way that Zynga makes money has got nothing to do with these fantastic mobile gaming experiences. Like, look, if you have an iPad, get Max Payne. Get your controller, yeah. put them in. Bam, you'll have some fun. Um, but this, I think, is very much a statement of intent from Take-Two that they want to move into the mobile gaming space in that different way. Um, I mean, would you would you rather make a Walking Dead narrative game, if you want to make money, of course. Or would you make, what's the, oh, what's that game? It always has shots of ladies' butts oh, in every was... advert. Every advert. It's like, what way can we get an obvious creeper butt shot? Yeah, just... To stay a day of... State just, of decay of... Yeah. No, state of decay is good. <laughs> yeah. Day of survival. State of survival, that's it. Is it? Okay, nice. State of survival. You know, I have to parse through all of the... Yeah, state of zombie days gone decay survival yes. I don't know who it is. um but like that's the thing that game is going to make so much more money um you know like what if you do a gta spin-off game that is all about uh growing and managing your crime empire a modern day uh what you call that game the romeros did uh, empire, empire of sin, sin. Yeah. right a sort of you know empire of sin and it's grand theft auto and it's a mobile game and i mean that said that would have parts of gta i don't think it would have why most of the shark card interested gta audience do yeah. gta um but you know even that draw strife hayes did a good video on this one as well that lord of the rings something of war game that has appeared and it's just like avony it's just like come here my lord that you know we all got bombarded uh, anytime we went on the internet as kids um well not as kids as teens i suppose um so i really you know i'm worried that this is what take two is going to be doing um, so this is what Strauss said to the investors. We believe we have the best collection of console and PC intellectual property in the interactive entertainment business, and it's basically nearly entirely unexploited for mobile and free to play around the world. Imagine saying unexploited. Like, <laughs> I mean, I understand why you, you gamer <laughs> are saying that but from a business perspective obviously it's unexploited exploit the shit out of that make some money strauss i mean come on we have to get strauss living to at least 500 years mm, fair you know uh do you i mean that, that's how it is that, that's how it is he's 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 got to be able to reach age 150 and say how i am literally the immortal gaming god <laughs> and that has to be his next book um <laughs> I take the piss. I actually think there are some ways in which Strauss is pretty cool. Um, but obviously, you know, he's a big AAA CEO, so he does he does have to get a bit of a roast sometimes. Uh, but here's what he's saying. They're best-in-class free-to-play mobile gaming publishing operations. And that's really what I learned when I dove into some interviews, uh, some long-form podcasts with um, your man Pincus, who was the, the big Zynga guy, like the founder. I think he was the founder, I forget. Um, but that's the thing, renowned in operations. So you could even see Strauss here bringing that up. But the thing is, that's a shed load of money that they, um, that they have thrown in there, right? 
Um, now, of course, traditionally, PC and console games going to mobile has done well. I mean, PUBG uh, Mobile, $254 million in November uh, 2021. Wild Rift was top 10 App Store revenue the same month. Pokemon Go has earned more than $5 billion in revenue as of its, um, you know, its fifth anniversary. Uh, Tamsense uh, Timmy Studio, the COD Mobile people, well, COD Mobile's got over $10 billion reportedly in 2020. Then, of course, Activision Blizzard dropped $5.9 billion on Candy Crush and, or well, on King in 2015. EA opened their wallets last year for Glue and uh, Playdemic because, of course, I mean, man, Kim Kardashian Hollywood, fucking banger. Um, <laughs> and, of course, Golf Clash, too. Uh, those are some things that they do. Uh, so, look, it could be a while before they can take advantage of this, but you can see the money there. Um, we would bring up Genshin Impact and how much it makes, but I don't think that's... Like, it's a it's an outlier. It's a special case. Yeah. It's gacha for that audience, right? Mm. So I I, I think t- if they thought they could start pulling Genshin numbers, they're insane. Yeah. Uh, so I doubt that'll yeah. happen. Also, but. I think there is a very slightly different flavor in the gacha kind of market to the, I guess, Western-oriented gaming market in a way, where I don't expect Genshin or anything like Arknights or, you know, any of other Mihoi's work or, you know, any of those gacha games, I don't f- expect those to feel the same way as a GTA Online Mobile would. I expect mm-hmm. that to be a lot more of the, I guess, traditional Western form of exploitation, which is just a different, sort of a different psychological trick and capacity to drain all your money away. Yeah. It's just sort of, you know, same concept, but different flavor, ultimately. But I mean, fundamentally, if it comes down to just gambling or yeah. gambling and cute anime girls, I mean, we obviously know which one's going to make the most money. Certainly. So definitely the latter, everyone. (laughs) Uh, Now, NFTs, because of course, the future is non-fungible, my dudes. Uh, Yeah, right. So Frank uh, Gibault told investors, he's the CEO, of course, of Zynga, um, earlier this week, that the idea that players will take play to earn uh, or play to own uh, is a very compelling idea that we think will have legs as the industry develops. Look, I think I'll have legs because if you told young me, who's like 13 years old, hey, you know, yeah, you could go and grind out some surveys for a gift cart, or you could grind out some vidya and sell an NFT. I mean, young me's like, I don't know. What? I can make money? I mean, how many young people, or just people in general, looked at uh, Diablo 3 and thought, shit, could I make some pocket money from this? Could I, by playing D3, make enough money to buy other video games? Because at that point in time, I only measured... I mean, basically, it was like, you know, my my sort of pre-proper adult thing was like, okay, is this enough to buy either two things, video games or graphics cards? Mm -hmm. That's basically how it was measured for so many of us, I think. I, I remember one of my greatest, like, the, the milestone I remember the most in YouTube is whenever I was um, able to afford a second uh, 560 so that I could, it was a, five, a second 560 Ti so that I could put them in SLI. Very That's good. when I was like, holy shit, this channel makes enough money that I could buy a 560 every two months. <laughs> nice. So we need NVIDIA Okta SLI. Mm. Of course, that would be scalable. And, but that's, I think, a really powerful trap. And one of the research topics that I've been going on to recently is, as I've been telling you guys, the Microsoft reward system that is yeah. deeply integrated into Game Pass and the Xbox uh, ecosystem and how that can essentially hire people for virtual work. So this whole idea of video games hiring people for virtual work, I mean, it's real. It's going to happen. A lot of people are going to hate it, but loads of people, because of the incentives, are going to partake in it. Uh, now, that said, investors are not really thrilled. No. And this was, uh, this is the interesting thing. Certainly surprising. Uh, so Take-Two Share saw one of their biggest daily declines in over a decade following this news, which probably means that, I mean, it's probably an okay enough buying opportunity then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, some investors apparently expressed concern that they are overpaying. They're paying 64% over Zynga's share price as a part of this deal. Uh, so that was the, the drop. Uh, their stock did close down 13.3% uh, the day the acquisition was announced, following Market Watch's claim that the company were on track for their biggest single uh, day decline since December 2009. And right now, shares are down 22.27% over the last five days, while Zynga shares have went up 40.67%. So there you mm. go. Interesting. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's We're so... Gold mobile. Yeah, I mean, that's 
that's a thing. You're just going to have, you know, like I was saying, they're so primitive and now they're going to have access to actually being able to exploit, which to me seems like great buying opportunity for them because there's no way they don't have a GTA Online mobile well, relatively soon. Mm. And with even the tiniest amount of base consideration, that's going to make billions. And that's straight up, like yeah. anyone who sees the power of GTA and knows kind of has that feel that it almost doesn't matter what GTA does for at least two games, it's still going to be the biggest thing of all time. I mean, it's weird because uh, was it Strauss's claim that they have the best collection of console and PC IP in the, in, in the interactive entertainment business, as opposed to saying video games, but like so much of that is literally just GTA, really. Everything else I have is fine, but GTA is the real winner. He was clearly yeah. talking about save. <laughs> Absolutely. So you, you you just get a GTA <laughs> online mobile and that's it. You, that's just it over, basically. They'll have yeah. all of the money in the world. Yeah, so look, I think this makes a lot of sense. We can all see exactly why they would go here. I think that the stock dropping like this, look, it, it's just that sort of thing. It's very easy to see a stock dropping and go, oh my God, it's the end. I mean, how many people have done that for Tesla? When Tesla yeah. just kind of, you know, it does that. How many people have done that for so, so many companies? The thing really is, what is this like for the fundamentals of the business? And it does seem like an excellent force multiplier. It just is a case of, is that enough to uh, to get past that humongous purchase price? And we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I would say, as somebody who plays games, this is, you know, obviously not where I really want to see the focus of this company going. Not at all. Of course. I don't think it's where their focus is going to go. I think they know, much like with Activision, if Call of Duty turns into a mobile game, then that's the fastest way to hurt it. Mm. You know, COD Mobile works because, like, Call of Duty has been so well established as a brand. So I think they know that still the tentpoles in their in their business are the big core AAA games. Yeah. And that these things are just the big money harvesters <laughs> that, that sort of float around that. Um but I mean, yeah, it's not it's not what we it's not the sorts of games we play. So we would probably all rather this went somewhere else money wise, but I think we can all see why why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I'll at least posit it as a positive alternative to another way it could have went, which is they didn't buy Zynga and pulled a lot of Rockstar developers to work on mobile instead. So at least they're leaving their core development intact. And I, I think that just shows that they they know what this is. I think right. it's rather than a shift in focus, I think this is almost certainly a diversification play. Yeah, they're they're just leaving so much on the table by not hooking into this market. That now they're like, yeah, well, might as well just exploit the shit out of that market while continuing what we're doing here in games, which is, you know, for better or worse what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there you go. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, I suppose, what is your best pitch <laughs> for a Take-Two Interactive mobile game? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know why that's my parting question, but that's what came out. So I suppose that's the end of the video then. That's a, well, actually, I'll steal this idea before anyone else has it. A Strauss Zelnick led uh, tennis game. Okay, no, hundred <laughs> percent Zelnick tennis. <laughs> well, actually, no, that's uh, that's a series Zelnick, and then whatever it is, Perfect. Um, because uh, and also by the way, give Strauss a bit of a wiki or a bit of yeah. a search. Look into his background; it's surprisingly interesting. Mm -hmm. That's it for us. Thank you for listening. Take care. We'll see you next time.